Yes, we're back in virtual Echo Yankee Zulu again. Welcome. This is Biggin Hill Airport for a bit of a change today because we can't be in real Echo Yankee Zulu. Melbourne's back in some pretty strict lockdown restrictions once again. Yes, it's not Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. I don't have it yet. Other people do. I'm not bitter about that. I'm just going to still continue to fly what I have access to, which is X-Plane 11 running the TalkSim SR22 on a MacBook Pro. Some of the features I didn't cover before, this excellent cover that you can have on Echo Yankee Zulu when it's on the ground, the chocks that you can see, the tie downs. These are all really cool features and really good for flight training as well, just to get you through the process of getting the aircraft ready. To access it, you just roll over this little menu on the left. Uh, we can take the fuselage cover off, which takes the tie downs off as well. Down here, that can come off to the inlet covers and of course you can take the chocks off you'd normally do that at the end but let's just do it now make sure you don't do that when the airplane's on a slope and the park brake isn't on never done that before ever all right let's start her up blop, blop. Mm -hmm. oh one thing as well that a lot of people told me to do last time if you click on the keys oh this thing really is a it's cold so let's prime it for a few more seconds there we go, turn the boost pump on, bring the power back to about there, and without too much delay, here we go. This time. Oh, come on. Perfect, there we go, started first time. Now I've put a flight plan in today to take us from EGKB, which is Biggin Hill. I've just picked a, a random waypoint which is gonna be able to vector us onto the ILS for London City Airport. I wanna kind of test out this SR22 a little more. I wanna test some of these longer flight videos as well so you can follow along a little bit more with me because there is potentially an upgrade to equipment and the content that's coming to this channel. I don't wanna to say too much because well, things change every bloody day at the moment in lockdown, but it may be time to retire the MacBook laptop. Let's taxi out. I want to show you a couple of other cool features of this aircraft. Just one little thing. Watch the keys here as you're moving around. Little things like that. But let's just taxi out to the runway, do our lineup checks, and then let us take off. All right, then quick lineup checks, fuel pump. On fuel is set, flaps will bring down a 50%, mixture is full rich. Assuming we've got our clearance and our transponder code, yoke is full and free. Let's fly to London City Airport. I've also set the weather conditions so we should go into IMC. The cloud base is quite low here. We'll get above the clouds and then we'll descend through the clouds. So no cheating at London City. We're just going to use the avionics and fly the ILS. Anyway, let's chatter more. Fly flatter, full power. We go and straight into the cloud so straight on the instruments and at this point I'll hit the autopilot button which will continue to climb us at the uh, angle we were climbing at I'm gonna bump it into nav mode because I have got a GPS waypoint set up that I want to take us to which should turn us to a heading probably a westerly heading just as it picks up the track and then it will take us out to that waypoint and we'll just climb up. So I've got 2,000 in there. We'll actually go up to 3,000 today. So hopefully we can get above the cloud. Climbing nicely, about 113 knots. That'll do. One thing I've noticed is I don't get the little chime, the 1,000 feet to go that you normally get in the perspective system, but you get that little dung when you've got uh, 1,000 feet still to go, but we don't have that here. Dung, I'll do it for you. So 1,000 feet to go. There you go, coming to the top of the cloud. Perfect. It's always the best thing when you're flying for real and you break through the cloud. You're just sitting there right on top of it, surfing along the cloud tops. 300 feet to go, and then we'll just lean the engine out and get it ready for the cruise and brief the approach. I've been flying this SR22 model a little bit more these last couple of days since the last video I put up. I've been taking it up quite high, so I took it up to about uh, flight level 160 doing a couple of other approaches as well. Obviously, I'm struggling a little bit with the hardware that I have available to me at the moment, but like I did say, I am gonna to look to upgrade that. But apart from my own issues with the very old technology I'm using, I actually really like flying this model. 
I think mainly because of the familiarities, because I know I know a lot of the numbers. Like for example, here we go. We're just going to lean in the cruise. If I want to do a quick lean without using things like lean assist, I'm just going to pull it back to about 75% power, and then come down to the mixture here. I'll just keep the engine page so I can see it, and then I'm just going to lean this mixture back so the temperatures. You'll see the exhaust gas temperatures here are going to start going up and lean back so these go up to about 1300. Now don't use these numbers obviously if you're flying for real but just here in the sim I found this works quite well. About 1300 degrees Fahrenheit which should give me around 19, yeah 19 and a half gallons per hour fuel flow. Leans it out a little bit. So they're still on the um, rich side of peak, that's not the lean side of peak. So set up for the cruise, we're now on the right track. And yeah, what I thought I'd do is do the ILS into London City Airport because that's quite a steep approach. I think, yeah, like I said, it's a 5.5 degree glide slope. I'll put the plate up on the screen here, as you can see. So if I go into the flight plan here, you can see I've got it loaded up, the uh, approach for EGLC. Oh, let's just see if I can get that as, uh, the gauges here on the fuel tank so let me zoom in here I've got some of the rendering and anti-aliasing settings a bit lower so I get a better frame rate but you should see watch the needle here if I just quickly bank see it moving around a little bit only subtly only a little amount but it's good it just adds to the realism so yes thanks to everyone who has been suggesting it's time for me to upgrade my equipment I have been talking to a couple of people about um, maybe retiring the 2017 MacBook Pro from its flight sim duties but maybe bringing in something with a little bit more power. I've had a lot of suggestions from you guys in terms of graphic cards, CPUs, the kind of build that I might want to put together. Thank you. Keep them coming. Let me know in the comments below. Honestly, this stuff really helps me. Upgrading equipment coming soon. Please tell me. I know a lot of you guys know a lot more about the flight sim world than I do. I'm kind of more real world. But if you've got some tips on, you know, computer setups, builds, graphics card that you recommend, monitors, whatever, please let me know. I really enjoy the conversation. I'll try and write back to as many of you as I can. I just kicked my camera. All right, so let's assume we're on vectors at this point from air traffic control. So I'm just going to go across. We're on heading mode. Well, sorry, we've got the heading bug centered, but we'll flick the autopilot onto heading mode. I've got the... ILS tuned in, you can see here 1115.1.5 1, 1 and the approach is loaded into the flight plan now. So what I can do if we're on vectors, so we haven't been cleared for the, the approach, but we'll fly on heading mode and I'll change CDI across to localizer. We'll set the course, the course isn't set, that should be 093 and what we'll do is we'll start a descent as well down to 2,000 feet we'll assume we've been cleared oh no not up down down to 2,000 feet so we'll do that under vertical speed and we'll come back onto the power a little bit so because we're getting ready as well then for the approach what I'll do is one of my checks would be let's put the mixture mixture full rich nice you can see on the moving map now here's the extended center line of the ILS so what we want to do is we want to be coming along here capturing the localizer and then fly down the localizer now what we can do as well if we're cleared for the approach so we're going to maintain this heading cleared for the approach we'd hit approach mode get that ready I'd also come into my flight plan and go procedure activate approach So we've got that on the GPS as well. We're turning now, so it looks like the localizer, yep, the localizer's being picked up. The glide slopes um, above us, which is correct. We should be just descending still to 2,000 feet. I might make that descent a little bit faster. Not sure what it is. Maybe it's the um, angle that we were intercepting that with, but I do find that this, whether it's my setup, my, my <laughs> stupid laptop, it doesn't quite catch the localizer properly first time when you're flying on autopilot. See, we flew through it, and now we're actually flying back onto the localizer again so it will capture it this time but when you first pick it up it doesn't always grab it first time so we'll do our pre-landing checks brake pressure check if i had brake pedals i would check them undercarriage is fixed and down mixture has already gone full rich fuel pump on instruments and switches are all checked we'll put the pedo heat on because we are going to be going through some visible moisture milkshake you have to go away for now sorry milkshake Popped something up on my Instagram account yesterday just about all the um, aircraft that were still flying in Melbourne at the moment. I know there were a few people flying yesterday still waiting to hear what's happening with the flight schools. I've heard that a lot of the schools have shut down today for the next six weeks. So, look, I just want to say if any of you are affected by this in your flight training at the moment, a couple of you from year 12 who've written to me, your final year, year 12, is just getting so screwed up at the moment. I feel for you. I'm, I'm not in a bad situation here. I'm 
still able to make YouTube videos. Yeah, I can't fly for real, but I only used to fly for fun. I'm not flight training, I'm not in education. My career doesn't specifically depend on it. So whilst I might not be going through exactly the same thing as, uh, as some of you are out there, I just, um, we're in this together and I'll do my bit by staying at home and making these crazy simulator videos to hopefully keep you entertained whilst it's all happening. All right, glide slope's coming in. We have to, I have to think fast here because you see this glide slope's coming in quite quickly. That's because it's a steep glide slope. It's a lot steeper than normal. So we're going to put a stage of flaps in now with one dot deflection. I'm just going to push forward on the nose just to keep us so we don't balloon up too much. And what we want to do, come on. What we want to do is now we're going to start descending down the glide slope, but we've really got to watch our speed. Because it's just like going down a steeper hill on your bike. You know, if your hill is a three degree slope and you freewheel it down, you're gonna go at one speed. But if your hill's a five and a half degree slope, then you're gonna go a lot faster down it. Looking out the window, still can't see anything. Typical day in London, murky, gray. All right, we're coming up to around 700 feet. So I'm gonna go back on the power just a little bit. I just want this speed here to come down before we get to 500 feet indicated. That's looking better. And there we go. And the runway's come into sight. So we are visual with the runway now. But I'm still going to follow the procedure as if, because our minimum here is 400, 430 feet is our minimum. So I'll pretend we're going all the way down to minimum. But there we go. We're coming up to 500 feet. Let's go to the next stage of flaps now. And a little bit of forward pressure. Basically now all I need to do is just 500 feet. I just need to fly this profile all the way down. I don't need to make any more changes now. There's, we've just gone past our minimum. So let's look up with visual. Let's disengage the autopilot. And yeah, the nice thing is I really don't need to make any big adjustments now. I can just fly this all the way down. Come back on the power a little bit more. Slowing us down a little bit more. And runway is made. Coming back on the power. Do, 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 do. And... We're going to touch down. Beautiful. All right, that's how I would fly the ILS into London City Airport on a typical grey London day. If you're new to the channel and you're not a subscriber, do consider clicking on that subscribe button. It means a lot to me to see the channel grow. Let me know in the comments below about those specs for the PC and any flight sim ideas you might have that you want to see me do. And look, if you're going through this lockdown, wherever you are in the world, I hope you're okay. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.